once you start realizing this from experience, because now I'm 100 times in on Diamond, by the way, a little bit over that. And once you start realizing what's going on, you actually realize once everything demystifies, now you're just dealing with your own egregor. Because I was talking about the egregors not to say that, hey, someone's just constructing egregors like Nike and AT&T and trying to rule the astral plane with them. Yes, that's going on. But we're also constructing them ourselves in the character that we've designed in this reality. So then when we want to transcend this reality, now we must kill this egregor. And this gets very interesting. Because this is why there's always this death process always written about, even within the ancient stories from the Dogon. That what happens is the egregor, because even the body, as Joe Dispenza's work shows, has its own set of memory and has its own brain. So what many people are dealing with, because they stay in the dense matter and stay in the dense thoughts so much that in the maze, they actually comprise mostly of their body memory. Their higher chakras are generally dormant. So what happens in this stage is the person is now actually at a point where they would need to pick up their chakra centers a lot to be able to perceive what would be going on in these higher stages of their own consciousness. So it basically means that they begin to construct a lower world being that they think is them. And only until you challenge the beast do you actually realize now it's time to tussle. And this is why... People have a hard time breaking habits because it feels uncomfortable for them. Breaking habits in this tense is not something that you think is good or bad to do, but staying in cycles. Habits are cycles. That's it. We don't need to look any deeper into trying to get into what are good habits and what are bad habits. All that is falling down Alice's Wonderland wonder hole. Here's another thing. If you check out the mind, the mind is a maze. Okay, so when the when the Anunnaki talk about, well, let us send them into the mines to mine the gold. What they're referring to is. Let a person go deep into their own thoughts and then create something, our gold, or into their own passions, their deepest passions. This is done when we have sexual contact and let them create, let them bring out the gold. And then when they bring out the gold, they'll bring it out into this vessel, which we're calling Earth. Right. And in this vessel, it's not even nowhere near full. Like, I'm sure you could go to Texas and just drive and nobody's there. You can go to Idaho, Alaska and just drive and nobody's there. So this thing is a vessel and it's not even nowhere near full yet. So are we going to continuously, which is not a good or bad thing, but keep contributing into the dense matter of the memories in our matrix, which are used like energy kilojoules for us to stay alive in remembrance? Or are we going to now go back, because that's what we would be doing in the tense, we would be returning to where we were before, to that sailor, which is the cognate of the highest level of the physical beings that have stepped into this. The sailor who knew how to sail the cosmic ship and not shipwreck their own ship because they don't know how to follow the course that's laid out in the disk that's running across the sky, which they call DVD. Right. Okay. so DVD, which gives you the tetrahedron when you put the letters together, the D is a is a triangle, the V, then another D. When you put this together, the tetrahedron. Okay. interesting. I never noticed that. Look at it. It's called David. Okay. now this David is the disc. Now, this disc actually, you know, we don't want to drive too far uh, right in this case, because now you'll be talking about UFOs and things. It'll be completely externalized. But it actually is the shape of the of the uh, of the Adinkra, the fully nested boson Adinkra, which is basically where it it puffs out and it huffs out and then it wafts like you can see on the top of mountains, which uh, when the clouds do that on top of a mount, uh, I think one of the mountains is Mehijabeth. So what I'm talking about is, is that your form, this is why the serpent can be tamed and can be tamed to stand up right. This means the, the chakra center can actually be brought into a fully erect bow and that actually would create a propulsion field around you that would be so strong. It would cause other objects which are mostly unsure of themselves. All dense matter is unsure of itself. It's basically slow down light. You would be able to transform dense matter at will. Now, we're not, this is, I, I don't want people to get at all that this is quack stuff. Because I don't have time. If you know anything about my profile, I don't have time for quack stuff. I'd rather go back and make a bunch of money doing something else. This mind can be used, this body, this soul, this spirit, all these different components that I've come aware of can be used with anything. 
but yet I focus them tirelessly on the massive awareness of consciousness and broadcasting those signals through the entire community of Earth. Why? Because there's nothing greater. When we realize what's going on here, we realize that, see, and no matter how long this takes, I'll be here. The uniqueness within every person is what we're looking to unlock so they can man their part of the ship. Now, the uniqueness of a person sometimes, especially if they haven't honed it in properly, is actually what you don't like about a person most of the time. Because it's actually what's not like you. And we have a tendency to shy away from things that's not like us and want everything to be like us. And this is that whole process that we've been bred through, which is fear. Because in society, when one brings out their uniqueness, it generally can be harnessed for some kind of current or some kind of potential, right? So unique people in society are the ones with the big shows. and with the, Even if they're acting crazy because all they're working on is just attraction. And this is what they would love to call the laws of attraction. No, this is, this is more of electrical. It's the attraction that's necessary to pull current. This is what's written in electronics. If you have a proper amount of attraction coming off of a component on the board, it will pull from the system the amount of current that it needs. So basically what it's saying is, is that if you start going out there exerting a lot of attraction with what you're doing, it doesn't give specifics. <laughs> All of a sudden, you would start getting pulled in more. You were pull in more current. This is actually the secret to building wealth on all levels, getting to sovereignty. But this is, of course, you're running through for a while. First of all, let's rewind a bit. You're dealing with Egregor, though. This is the physical body that actually is convinced it'll die. It believes in birth, so it has to believe in death. See, the thing is, is about our, our reality exists we mostly only see half of it because we only choose to see half. We only want the pleasure. We don't want the pain, but the pain means more to us. This is symbolic to why we see only one half of the moon. This is symbolic to why we only have one half of the English language. This is symbolic to why there's a cut right down the middle of the body, which you can see when the woman goes into a full pregnant gestation cycle. You can see the incision that was so deep within the division of what it takes to create a world. It divided the body of a sun to create the world of the projection that we're actually living in. And it's so hyper-organic, it actually borderlines what they call singularity, where people start frying their brains trying to figure out, is computers the same thing, is consciousness, is what is actually happening, is there a separation? And then they try to go quantum separate. So this is the dangers of duality. Like, remember, judge and ye shall be judged. The entire thing still here is wired on this binary judging. So the only way to hack the system, to literally hack the body that you've been placed in, because the body is a dual component. There is an arbitrator that's mostly sleep, but there's a dualistic aspect of the body, a logic side, another side, two eyeballs, etc. So this is called hardware. So to hack the hardware... One would have to remove themselves in a pers pr as much as possible from the duality of saying this one's good, this one's bad. Because once you enter the mind, once you go back into the maze, which is what trying to distinguish things and, and figure out things and all of that, you, you step back into this thing's trap. And then you, and where you're leaving is the all knowing. And this is. Just something that I want to get very clear with everyone before we terminate the call today is to remember the all-knowing versus belief. Now, here you have 98% believers. They believe in every damn thing, but they don't know. There's a big difference here, and I'll show you. If a guy comes in, let's say a woman, man, if you're going to elect this person, and the person just comes in and says, I believe we can make change. I believe we can work together. I believe we can really do some things and ignite this entire world. They may cheer. They may love it. He walks off the stage. Another guy walks in, a woman walks in and says, I know we can make change. I know we can do this together. I know this is going to happen. When you put those two next to each other, people are always going to go with what? who knows. Now, because no is a code. No stops things. It means, no, I'm not playing with you anymore. When a person says no, notice it's K-N-O-W-N-N-O. 
it stops things. It is a vibration that immediately when a person says no, it stops. What this does is, is it changes the monkey mind. Because see, the monkey mind has a million ways inside of getting you back into the maze. So it doesn't care what it needs to talk about. Even if you're right, even if you're left, <laughs> it doesn't matter. It knows how to get you to start thinking again. And when you think, you engage the R complex of the brain. Why? Thought is backwards. If you already know, what do you need to think for? So because thought is backwards, it taps back into the primordial side, what they call the reptilian side of the consciousness. These are the primes. They're the ones that we're standing on. So what happens is, is that when you engage the R complex as a gear in your brain, it goes backwards. And this is what happens when the person tries to use language in meditation, starts trying to judge things even uses language that's why language was a part of the serpent if you read the books correctly it was the serpent that invented these words and what it needed us for and this is us talking us on a timeline i'm not talking about anything separate here it needed us because we have voice boxes and then what our voice boxes remember serpents only hiss you're seeing the entire timeline they can't make vocal sounds but the human has this multi <laughs> a multiplistic voice box that allows it to call forth all frequencies. We can even whistle. Then we have the frontal lobe. So every single range of the entire spectrum of frequency we can emit. Perfect. So if we're being used, though, to just maintain, see, like in the Hindu text, they talk about this could be Vasuki's realm. There's a few more Nagas up from this. It, those are all the physical worlds. Rather than realizing that you also, and I'm saying, not saying run away, but remember you have prime. You can ride at the tip of the wave of yourself. You can blow wind in your own sails. Think about what I'm saying. You can rejuvenate your entire being and then get back on. See, the reason why most of the stars are on the disc, masters of the game, <laughs> The reason why the disc moves a certain way, like the sky moves a certain way, right? And all the stars follow because that's a current. And that's why for the people that are sailors, they know that the ocean moves based on how the stars move. Duh. So now you got this current moving. And if you just stay on the wave, all these are electrical terms now, if you just stay on the wave. You can actually keep surfing through the entire thing on the tip of the wave without using any of your energy. None of you would never have to put engage the oars on your boat or even you see what it means. So this means that this is why when you get in your own synchronistic order, what this actually does is it lines you up with yourself and then you actually begin to move on this. And how you can be comfortable with this is know that there is a time and place for everything. If you notice that in this space, every single star will touch every single space at a certain point. So it's not in a rush. Like there's certain times to actually create things. There's certain times to go deeply in love and run off in the woods and just take all your clothes off. There's another time to buckle down and actually master something and learn something in the matrix. And when those periods are coming through, which m many people, when you just tap into yourself, you know those periods intuitively. You don't have to even grab a calendar. But then when you're going through those periods, the maximization of the power that comes with what you're creating. And that's why I was saying the system here the false matrix is not smart it's just dumbed everyone down and it's denied us the basic knowledge of metaphysics and any other pairing of any master art whether it's music anything that there is actual that chord and that rhythm that has to be there even it's in cars it's in everything when it has to finally plug it in and it works if you know how to take every single piece apart in there and know what that piece does, you'll find each correspondence inside of your body. And that's the blueprint. That's the manual that was a part of a treaty. They call that treaty the covenant that we would not get. And I'll say it again. After World War II, remember, there was a treaty that even went on with the Germans where they had to sign certain things. And now even the German people are not in the hands of the German state. They're actually in the hands of the allies. They know this, too. So there's things on that treaty. Also, you can't have certain kind of weapons. You can't do up. That's treaties. One of the treaties that was signed during the last war that these beings always get into, you see it even happening today, was that the humans would not know their power. And now that 
that's what's been broken. If there's anything that we've received out of all of this, because time is nonlinear, you're getting it right now. It's just the word which does not come back void. This word that I'm giving you that simply explains to you that you are the central character in his theme. There is even something beyond this. These are all characters in a box. And you have to make sure that you don't get stuck in that box. And then at the same time, have some fun. You, every, one thing that's guaranteed is you're going to leave here. <laughs> so there's always going to be this point. What I mean by having fun is that there's always a mixture. I'm still connected. Okay, what I mean by having fun is that you're, you got, you're guaranteed to get out of here anyway. Especially if you're not, when you leave here having no regrets, you got the t-shirt. So while you're here, get to it. Know that you can move with this kind of power and this kind of force. Why not? Leave a streak across that sky. And that's what I came here to deliver. That's that's what I'm here for. And like I said, that is a vibration. I'm bringing it in English, but I can cross it over into anything. So we have this water programming device that's coming out called Phi Aqua. You can get on the mailing list about that. We have some other things that are coming out just to push energy into the environment. That is that same kind of energy that makes us feel that we have some desire that makes us feel that we're attracted that makes us feel orgasmic that kind of energy there are patterns for that kind of energy and i've been very steadfast and i've been looking into all the things because for me it's all in my word it's all in my name and so if i say hey this is going to pop this is something that's big it better be that but that's also the same way I get on this show today is that what I'm talking about right now is the peak. And the reason why I'm going to be there is because I really want to do it. It has nothing to do with everybody else and everything, everything else. I would have never got that far. It's about me. And I'm sharing that with you as a part of an extension of me and then even something greater. And that's why I know every time we get on these true frequency shows, like I was saying today, like because I, I didn't get the message to like three hours ago. But I was like, man, you, I got to get in there because I need to I got to I got something that I'm carrying right now. And so it's good. You know, it's good that, it, you know, it came out. <laughs> well said. Um, you, you hit on so many points. And I.